Well, there we go. It says we're live. What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here with Cheesehead TV coming to you live on Thursday morning. Packers set to hit the practice field again a little bit later today. News breaking overnight from Rob Domofsky of ESPN. Uh, Packers have not the return of the Mac, but the arrival of the Mac. Um, former fifth round pick with the Ravens. Uh, had an interesting summer where he was with the Lions and then cut and then with the Giants for a cup of coffee and then cut. Uh, they Giants cut him down on the cut down to 53 and then uh, worked out for the Packers on Monday and apparently signed with the team or is set to sign this morning. Um, he's an interesting player and something they desperately need. Uh, people have been talking about it all offseason uh, regarding just a bigger body along the defensive line. Now, I don't know how quickly they'll get him up to speed. I'd be surprised if he's out there Sunday against the Vikings, although you never know. Um, but uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say it was the first thing I thought, oh, this is like a Grady Jackson or a Howard Green falling into your lap. Possibly. Possibly. I'm not going to say that's what it is, but I would be lying if I said this is the type of thing the Packers have gone through before. Good to see everybody in the comments section. Jill, good morning. Russell's checking in. Garland, good morning from New York City. How are you, buddy? Mm. Good morning from Louisville. Kevin, how are you? About to order my lot of ball game left shirt. Brian, that's what I'm talking about. Thanks for the support. What up from Belgium? Jan, what's up? Good morning from Kyle Craft, Iowa. Good morning, Kyle. How are you? Hasn't Mac been on four teams already? Got to be a reason, right? Uh, well, mostly probably because they have big bodies and or are uh, moving away from the body type. Uh, that's big reason why the Ravens wanted to move on, um, especially after their offseason where they signed uh, Cleus Campbell in free agency. Uh, he became kind of redundant. Um, and then you look at the Lions. I think we're looking at him maybe in an A. Sean Robinson type role after Robinson moved on. Um, but they like some of their other guys in camp. <clears throat> the Giants, very similar in the sense that they had a number of big bodies already. The Packers don't. Now, this is a body type the Packers just haven't had alongside Kenny Clark in a while. And a fun little note on Mac is he was uh, teammates with Kingsley Kiki at AM. and They terrorized the run game down there. So it'll be fun to watch him get put into the mix. And good morning. Florida checking in. What's up, buddy? Carry the G. That's what I am talking about, Dave. Hmm. Uh, Brandy, uh, I appreciate everything you just said in your text or here. I'm not going to spout it uh, live, but I agree. What's up, Mags? Does the Ramsey deal King's price tag? You guys really got to work on including all the words in your questions. Um, does the Ramsey deal King's price tag drive it up? Probably. It certainly will reset the market uh, for corner. And no one's arguing that they're going to pay King in the neighborhood of Ramsey, but it certainly is a benchmark for the agent to point to. So uh, it's becoming more and more difficult to see them keeping King. If you talk about, you know, we've heard all off season and again this week that they are speaking with Aaron Jones about an extension. Brian Gudikins just told uh, Pete Doherty in this morning's Press Gazette that retaining David Bakhtiari is a priority. Well, these priorities and these talks at, at one point or another are going to start excluding guys, especially in a 2021 cap situation where they're probably going to be uh, losing cap space, uh, the cap for kind of the first time in modern history. So pump for Sunday, Lenny, I'm with you, buddy. Is the game day 46 expanded this year? Kind of Caleb. Um, it's kind of convoluted, but they can add two players from the practice squad. They can shuttle them up to make a 48. Jake, thanks for the super chat. Will Rogers go overboard with how count, hard count with a lack of crowd noise this year? I don't know about overboard. I mean, I think he's going to operate much like he always has. I asked him about his dummy calls uh, yesterday uh, during his availability, and he's certainly cognizant of it. He certainly knows that things are going to be more out in the open because of a lack of fans. But um, trying to get guys off sides, it's something he's always done. He's always going to do. I would – I would contend he's already gone overboard. So it's not like he has anywhere to go. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how uh, how much more he tries to do it. Robert, thanks for the super chat. No question, just a big thank you for what you do. Robert, that's really kind of you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the support. 
Corey, thanks for the super chat. Hey, Nags and all, we may not get 17 weeks like this, so let's enjoy every week as if it were the last. Carry the G, go back, go. Corey, that's, uh, that's a little morbid, right? Um, I'm Every week, baby, they're going 17 weeks, and they're going to the Super Bowl. I don't care, man. The NFL's got it down. It's going to happen. Let's go, people. Power positive thinking. John Hunter out. Yes, the news breaking yesterday. Daniel, Daniel Hunter has been placed on injured reserve. In fact, if you get a chance, go watch Aaron Rodgers' press availability because Bill Huber opens up the questioning literally a minute after that news broke, and he broke the news to Aaron, and Aaron's facial expression is everything. It's perfect. I don't understand how some stadiums can have fans and others can't because the NFL left it up to the individual teams to make the determination. Um, so those teams have gone about either saying yay or nay. Obviously, the Packers have said nay for the first two games. Uh, the Chiefs, who opened tonight, have said yay. So they will have some fans in attendance. But, uh, yeah, there's no blanket policy from the league. So each team is up left to their own devices. That's why. Jesse, thanks for the super chat. Might have been talked about before, but are they allowing artificial noise slash fake crowd noise? Jesse, I'm glad you asked because there seems to be some confusion around this. And now this may have changed since, oh, say like three days ago when I kind of took a deep dive on this subject, reading about it. Um, but from my understanding, there will be two different tracks of fake crowd noise. There will be one in the stadium that the players will be hearing while they play the game and coaches, etc. And it is the that's the track that we heard or the initial track that we heard in Lambeau, the first practice there where the Packers were playing it to try and get used to it. And I can tell you, it is God fucking awful. As I said on Twitter, it sounds like some kind of sound effect loop from the miniseries V back in the 80s on loop. It doesn't sound like a crowd at all. Um, but and I think it was Kyle Shanahan yesterday was quoted as saying it was a form of human torture. It's all, I mean, I'm telling you, it's awful. Uh, but then there is a second track, which will be used by the broadcast companies, the, you know, the broadcast partners who will be using their own audio track of fake crowd noise, quote unquote, for the broadcast. So what you're going to be hearing on television is not going to be what's being played in the stadium. Confused yet? I hate it all. Just play in an empty stadium. If the broadcast wants to add a little noise, fine. You know, we saw that with Premier League, and it worked fine. This this pumping in noise in the stadium is just a problem in search of a solution in search of a problem. Really, I hate it. I hate. I can't express how much I hate it. But that's just me. Dave, thanks for the super chat. Biggest area you think Packers exposed versus the Vikings? Their O line, secondary, carry the G. Thank you, Dave. Um, I, I don't see how they block the Packers. And that's why I've said all offseason and all week leading up to this game, to me, their whole entire game plan is going to be about not only, and obviously they're going to ride Dalvin Cook uh, until the Packers prove they can stop him, but when they do decide to throw on early downs, it's going to be about quick rhythm passing, getting the ball out of Kirk Cousins' hands. But eventually, they're going to get in second and long. They're going to get in third and long. And when that happens, they're not going to be able to block the Packers. They just aren't. They know this. We know this. Everyone in the building is going to know it. Everyone watching is going to know it. So it is incumbent upon them to make sure they're not in those situations. But football being as it is, they will be in those situations from time to time. And then the Packers will be taking advantage. Of that, you can count on. Oh. Uh, Hologram projections of crowds in the stands, man. Why? Just watch it on mute. Well, I'll be watching it on mute from the Cheesehead TV studio for our watch party. So, salute. Hmm. With no crowd, will kickers be hitting 60-yard field goals with a lot more ease? Does icing kickers work? I don't think noise ever plays into it for kickers. Um, the icing, they'll tell you it doesn't. Every once in a while, maybe it works, but it's the mechanics of the operation and trying to get that down. And I don't see how crowd noise really affects it. Mason has said he doesn't really, he kind of has blinders on out there and doesn't really know the outside world exists while it's kicking. So I don't think it, it will have a dramatic effect one way or the other. How will coverage of tight ends improve? Last year we struggled. Robin, you are not kidding. I, I do think Kirksey helps in that regard. Um, he's looked really fluid, uh, turning his hips, getting up the, up the seam, especially. Um, but I think it's going to be an area where they continue to struggle overall. 
I just think because of the nature of Petten's scheme, what he tries to do as far as mixing up zone and uh, rush, his rushes, I just think that's an area that's always going to be an issue. Um, it's not to say that they won't be a little bit improved because I think they will be, especially with Kirksey, but I do see that continuing to be an issue. Now, this is the kind of question I like to get, Walter. Thank you for the super chat. Who will the Packers face in the Super Bowl? Go Pack Go. That is what I'm talking about. Um, who will they face in the Super Bowl? That's really – see, i tell you what. I don't want to go chalk, you know. I don't want to go Chiefs because that's boring and everyone's kind of expecting it and probably picking them. But come on, let's go Packers-Chiefs. Let's recreate OG Super Bowl. Let's talk about Andy Reid versus Matt LaFleur. That's what I'm talking about. So I'll, I'll put me down for the Chiefs. Evan, thanks nice for the super chat. Packers allowed to pump in fake Go Pack Goes? I think so. Uh, the, the league's memo and the, the writing I've read around it states that they are going to be allowed to have their usual game day operations when it comes to, you know, music, songs, what have you. And I think the Go Pack Go chant would fall under that. I tweeted out yesterday, or was it the day before, it is going to be really weird when they play it. And yes, they'll probably have the fake crowd going, Go Pack Go. But it's going to just be bizarre not having a crowd there to chant it. I, I don't know, man. It's going to be a weird year. But yes, they are allowed to do so. Nathan, thank you for the super chat. With Hunter out and Ngankwe rushing from the opposite side, who is Bakhtiari going to block? Uh, I think your police work's off there, Nathan. I believe Ngankwe is going to line up on the right side, according to what Bill Huber put out there when he was signed or traded for by the Vikings. Um, he primarily lines up on the right side, which means he'll be going up against David Bakhtiari. Also, that CBS top pass rush duo list already failing. <laughs> Outstanding. I mean, just keep disrespecting the Smiths. Keep disrespecting Rashawn Gary, national media, and they're, they're going to wake you up. They are going to wake you up. Phil, hack the horn. Yes, hack the horn. Standing offer from Cheesehead TV, $10,000. If you can hack the horn at U.S. Bank Stadium and make it play Go Pack Go instead of a... 10000 Direct to you. Nago, you've talked at length about how the QB play will dip post Rodgers, but what about the kicking game post Crosby? Below average at best? Depends on who they find, right? Um, you know, kickers certainly are a idiosyncratic breed, and there's no question the Packers have enjoyed real stability there, in part because they didn't move on in 2012 when Crosby struggled. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it will be an adventure. There's no doubt about it. I can't wait for our first kicking competition. It, yeah, but uh, kicker's a little easier to find than quarterbacks. It's just a little bit. Big cheese. Thanks for the super chat. Is it a relief that Packers don't have to block Hunter and only in Gonque, especially lack of depth right now at tackle? It is a relief in a way, but don't get it twisted. Uh, Zimmer can still dial up some pressure. Harrison Smith is still there. Kendricks and Barr is still there. He'll find ways to get those guys, you know, running at the quarterback. This is not like a reprieve and it's not a, oh, we've made it moment. It is an adjustment. There's no doubt about it. They're obviously a better defense with Hunter on the field, but it's not like they don't have any talent on that side of the ball who can get after the quarterback. So, yes, it is a bit of a relief, but certainly only a very small one. Who are my Sunday studs for this week? I don't even know what that means. Um, Give me Robert Tanyan on offense and Rashawn Gary on defense. How's that? If they use the soundtrack from last year's game at Minnesota, they'll have plenty of Go Pack Goes in there. I was just re-watching that game, and I had forgotten how loud the Go Pack Goes got, man. That was awesome, because you would hear the initial start of the chant, Go Pack Go, and then you'd hear the boos from the Minnesota fans. That was great. Brian, thanks for the super chat. Coward speaks Packers, then I drink alcohol. Why are you listening to Coward? I say this each and every time someone brings him up. Cheesehead TV exists. There is a wide swath of coverage of your team. Why are you watching Colin Cowherd or listening to him? I don't understand. I haven't consumed a single second of his content in years. It's not difficult. Nathan, thanks for the super chat. Is the horn the cat calling construction worker of stadiums? <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't really put that much thought into it, but that's, uh, that's, that's apt. 
How many touchdowns for Dylan over under? This sounds suspiciously like a fantasy football question. Speaking of which, I drafted Dylan in my fantasy league last night, and I'm very happy I did so. Um, for the year, for this season, for his rookie year, give me four. There you go. Dasis Watts, thanks for the super chat. Is Love's primary receiver on the roster now? Ooh. Ah. Oh. Yeah, probably, because he'll keep Devontae around. How's that? Uh, anyone else see the ESPN clip of Stephen A. teeing off on Green Bay yesterday? I laughed. Matthew, I actually did, and it was funny. And he's hilarious. I love him. I used to hate him, but now I love him. Uh, I think he's really good at what he does, but I don't put much credence in his you know, roster building and or criticisms of the Green Bay Packers. Have you enjoyed that we haven't had to argue whether 12 should play in preseason games this year, Bo? It's small blessings like that that have made this offseason <laughs> Okay. Um, are there going to be more runs away from Ngankwe? Do you aim your runner to the weak side? Not necessarily, Robin. Uh, the the old adage is you run at pass rushers. You don't run away from them. Because if you run away, they are typically very fast individuals who will run you down from the backside. But if you run at them with power, you can not only hopefully take advantage of that, but you wear them down a little bit and make them a little, just a, just a hair, a little trepidatious about firing off, thinking maybe this might be a run at me. So, yeah, the, the conventional thinking going way back is that you run at pass rushers. Where is Roger's interview from yesterday available at? It is on all of the Packers social media, and it is on Packers.com. Mark, thanks for the super chat. How do we sign Valdir after week one if all 53 spots are filled? Mark? I hate to break this to you, buddy, but they might not be signing Jared Valdir. Oh, or they could just cut somebody. We'll see. Other than last year's tape, what can they do to prepare for this week? Talk to Jerry Gray about Mike Zimmer? I don't know. Other than watch last year's tape and practice, that's pretty much the gig, right? Oh, you know what they can do? They can play Madden. There you go. Player practice today? Yeah, they'll be practicing later this, this morning. Uh, what else we got here? What else we got? Wait, what? What? Who? What? What? What are you guys talking about? No, I want in on this. There's some conversation back and forth going on here between Lenny and someone else, and I don't know what it's about. All right. Uh, predictions on Rogers' stat line for Sunday. Somewhat modest. I think they'll run the ball a lot. Um, give me 257 yards and a touchdown. No interceptions. Has Savage improved in tackling? He has some issues in the angles he takes. Uh, Brandy, that is one of the biggest things I'm going to be watching for on Sunday because, look, has he improved? I have no idea. And I don't think the Packers do either because there have been no live reps, especially for those frontline guys. So it is a big-time issue for him, and it's something he has to improve on. No question about it. The DeBerg clip. Oh, how mwah, beautiful was that? What's so funny is I've read about that before, but I've never seen it. If you guys don't know, CBS Sports put together this hilarious video from a podcast that my buddy Will Brinson did with uh, Randy Cross, uh, formerly of the 49ers way back in the day, where Steve DeBerg literally had basically a boom box strapped to his shoulder pads under his jersey with a microphone because he got laryngitis and they needed to be able to hear him make the calls. Check it out if you get the chance. It is fucking hilarious. Any more up-tempo offense this year? I hope so. Um, they've been kind of cagey about talking about it. I think they don't want to talk about it too much because they don't want teams to prepare for it. I do think they'll be a little bit more up-tempo this year. I don't know about a specific hurry-up package. That's something we certainly didn't see throughout summer in the camp, but I hope it is an extension of, and that's how Matt has spoken about it, it's an extension of their offense and something they can get to with ease. Well, that's fine, but they didn't do that last year. Not very much anyway. So I hope so. I really hope so. Tyler, thanks for the super chat. Who is the unknown coach slash staff we should all know more about? I say this all the time, but 464 geeks sitting here talking to me about Packers on a Thursday morning, they know everybody, most likely. But I will say Nathaniel Hackett. Um, I think he's a really good offensive mind who got scapegoated in Jacksonville. But if you look everywhere he has gone, wherever he has stopped along his route uh, as a coach, they have had excellent running games. And I think he is a big big part of that. Now, uh, I say that knowing that there is more to the job than that, but he is really good at what he does. Also, he's an insane Star Wars fan, which 
instantly makes him cool. Patrick, thank you for the super chat. How many touchdowns for Devontae Adams this week in week one? Give me one. I think they'll spread out the wealth. I think Devontae gets one. <laughs> Brandy, be nice. Be nice. Uh, expectations for Savage. I have, really don't have a feel for Savage. He was He had a very quiet camp. And he is a kid, as we said before, who has to take a step forward in year two. And you would hope to have seen that this summer, saw precious little of it. So I, I, what's funny is I saw a, a very noticeable progression from Amos in the defense. But with Savage, it was it was just not – just didn't pop. So I'm going to be watching him very closely on Sunday, or probably not during the game, but after the game, I'm looking at the tape. But he's a kid they need they big time to step up. There's no question about it. Uh. <laughs> Can you explain what the super chat was on the 08 quote about Favre takes you to the Super Bowl, Rodgers takes you to the toilet bowl? Was that a hot take exposed? Oh, it's one of the ultimate hot takes exposed ever. Um, back when the Packers used to actually have a fan fest and they used to um, do events where fans could meet and greet and press the flesh of the coach and the general manager – there is this all-time great clip. It's in the atrium, uh, and there's this, like kind of a crowd around Ted Thompson, and he's signing things. And this is right after the. This is during all of the drama surrounding the Packers moving on from Favre and going with Aaron Rodgers. And there's this gaggle of fans like asking him to sign stuff. And at one point, this guy. It's the video clip starts with this guy going, "You got this guy in Favre who's going to take you to the Super Bowl." And then you got Rodgers, and then this guy kind of gets caught up, like trying to, I think, trying to like come up with whatever witty thing he's about to say. And then he goes, who's going to take you to the, the toilet bowl? And then there's this pause while you see Ted try to like take it all in and go, well, how am I going to talk to this dude? And Ted just goes, yeah, I'm just saying we're not going to talk about that. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. But I'll never, ever forget it. It's one of my favorite Packer fan moments of all time. You have an opportunity talk speaking with the general manager of the Green Bay Packers. And that's what you say to him. It's am it's amazing. Oh, and by the way, open invitation to that dude, whoever he is, because I don't think we've ever gotten a name or who he is or what he's about. I don't know. But whoever you are, if you are out there, please get in touch with us at Cheesehead TV because I would absolutely love to do a podcast with you. I mean, you are an absolute legend. All right, I got to get going. I can't thank you guys enough for hanging out, talking some Packers. Uh, please hit like, hit subscribe. And if you're so inclined, consider giving us $5 a month on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash cheesehead TV. It supports everything we do, not just video, but on the website, social, and of course, five hours of streaming each and every game day this year. Your support really helps to make that happen. Can't thank you guys enough. Hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, Cheesehead TV. We are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Have a great day, everybody. Go Pack Go.